video covers section 4.2, trigonometric functions, the unit circle. Uh, before we're going to write a definition, for a short one, about trigonometry. And what that means, it is the measurement of triangles. Now, for this section, we're not going to be dealing with triangles. We're going to do that on Thursday, all right? Before we, I show you, we could get the same values with triangles, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you how to do it with the unit circle because it is important that you know how to not just memorize it, but how to create it from scratch, okay? Um, so the unit circle, it is a circle of radius equal to one. One centimeter, one inch, one foot, one mile, whatever you want the units to be, it's just one. That's it. That's all we need to know. Um, and so one characteristic of the unit circle is that its center is at the origin, so at the point zero, zero. So at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system. Now, we did cover circles last semester, section 1.9. So the equation of, a of the unit circle Who could tell me what that would be? Of what? The, the equation of the unit circle. Okay, Chris, tell me what it is. X squared plus Y squared equals 1. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so um, the center is at zero, zero, so the form that you guys learn, maybe this will refresh your mind a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was something like that, okay? Since the center comes from H and K, the center is here at zero, zero, so that's why we just have X squared plus Y squared. The radius is equal to one, one squared is one. Right? Okay. So what we're going to do next is um, we're not going to use x to denote the angle. And to keep things a little simpler and not use theta, we're going to use lowercase t. Okay? You can see it here. Lowercase t. So what I'm going to do here with the formula for arc length, remember that? I am going to multiply the radius of the unit circle, which happens to be 1, times the angle measurement, which is right here, t. Now, since the radius is equal to 1, what will be 1 times t? t. So what, the reason this is important and the reason why we use a unit circle is because Whenever the radius is equal to 1, the central angle here and the arc length are going to have the exact same um, measurement. Wait a second. The arc length will be the same as the angle measurement. Yes, that's what it means. If the radius is equal to 1. Now, here on the bottom, we have a couple of pictures, and we have here a positive degree. Remember, we start at the positive x-axis, and we go in the counterclockwise direction. That's how you know your angle is positive. Now, if you start, again, on the positive x-axis, but now you go in the clockwise direction, then your angle will be negative, right? You guys remember that? Yes? How do we call angles that are in that position? The initial side is at the positive x, and the vertex is at the origin. Mm -hmm. What about? The standard position. Very good. Um, so everything that we're going to be doing in this class, at least for the first two chapters, all of those angles will be in standard position. All right. So now, here are the six trigonometric functions, all right, and geometry you actually cover the three, but you cover them towards the end. 
So if you are taking geometry right now, you will see them again. Um, so what they mean is they are trigonometric ratios. And next class, when we compare, when we get those ratios using triangles, you will see where they come from. Okay? There is a mnemonic to map to remember them, and it is Soka Toa. I do not want you to refer to this topic as that. Okay? That is not a word. Okay? It's just a mnemonic to remember how to find those ratios, all right? I do not want to hear from you. The abbreviation for sine is S-I-N. I do not want to hear sin, ever. I do not want to hear cos. It's cosine, okay? You will say the whole thing. And I don't want to hear tan. It's tangent. Yes? Are we clear on that? Yes? Okay. Cosecant, the abbreviation is S C S C, sorry. And that comes from here. C S C. Cosecant. And secant S E C. And finally, we have C O T for cotangent. Now, how is we know that? <laughs> How are they related in so many ways? Like it's crazy. Um, all the things we can say about those six trigonometric functions. But one that is very important, and you can kind of see it here, is that sine and cosecant they are reciprocals of each other. So are cosine and secant, and of course also tangent and cotangent. You can appreciate it more on tangent and cotangent because you see here one is y over x, the other one is x over y, right? So when we have numbers and I tell you that the reciprocal, for example, what will be the reciprocal of two thirds? Three halves, right? So flip them. What will be the reciprocal of two? One half, yes. Okay? What will be the reciprocal of one fourth? Four. Okay. What will be the reciprocal of zero? Yes. Very good. So if this zero is an integer, it has a denominator of one, and if you flip them, you will get one over zero, which is undefined. All right, so this is going to become very important in a minute, okay? All right, so going back to this one, what we're going to do with the unit circle is that to find the trigonometric values for sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant is we're going to use the x and y coordinates of the unit circle. All right? So before we get to this part here, why don't we go back to that blank unit circle, and that's why I asked you to get the markers. Okay, so I asked you to get blue, right? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to do the following. Please use the ruler. So I want you to trace the x and y axis. The blue. Trace the x and y axis with blue, positive and negative sides. And if you have uh, a color pencil, a color pen that is blue, you want, might want to use it to write down the degrees and the radians. That's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to write down the degrees and the radians for those uh, specific points. So these are the points that I need, okay? Oh, not that one. What am I thinking? Okay, and we all know that we start with zero degrees, right? Zero degrees? 
or zero radians. Now, once we get here, this one is pretty obvious. It is 90 degrees, right? Yes? So let's write that down. Or pi over 2. Now, once we do half of a turn, that's 180 degrees, correct? We all know that. Do you guys remember what is, what, what is that in radians? Pi. Pi. And remember how I told you the other class, go by half, so we had like zero, one half, one half, two half, so this will be what? Three half. So three pi over two, or 270 degrees. All right, now we're going to do the one that corresponds to four. So with your green marker, just hold, go ahead and trace that line that divides each quadrant in half. And we already established that the line is the uh, y equals x, right? Yes, do you guys remember that? Oh no, we haven't established that in this class? Okay, we just did. Okay, do you guys remember what was the angle measurement there? We divide 90 by 2, what do we get? 45 degrees. And in radians, what was that? Pi over 4. Okay, now follow my arm. Pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. That would be 3 pi over 4. Thank you, Boo. Now, since we're doing this to the ring, so 3 pi over 4. And then here, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. Five pi over four, six pi over four, and then what will that be? What comes after six? Seven. seven. So this will be seven pi over four. And then the very last one, eight pi over four, which is two pi, right? We forgot to write those. So three hundred and sixty degrees, two pi. Okay, what other color did I you get? Pink and purple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's do purple. Let's do this one. So this one is going to be the one, if you just look at half of the circle, remember that's a complete pi, right? Yeah? yeah. This is one pi. It's half a circle. So here is one third, two thirds, three thirds, right? So now we're going to do the ones from the, the half of the denominator of three. So this is going to be pi over three. And the one after will be two pi over three. The one here at pi, that was 3 pi over 3, right? But we agree that in reduced form, it should be pi. 3 pi over 3. So the one after, what would that be? We have 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. Oh, and we're skipping the degree, sorry. And finally, we have here 5 pi over 3. All right, so in degrees, it's 
pretty simple. So what we do is here, if we divide 180 degrees by 3, what do we get? 60. 60. So right here is 60. This is 180, so this is 120. Now I'm going to tell you something too. The space from here to here is 30 degrees. 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 All right? So if you don't remember the 120, you can think of this. What is 90 plus 30? 120. All right, let's see if we can figure out this one here in degrees. So we will have 180 plus. Shouldn't it be 10 to 17 minutes? Which one? Vidiani? The one that you're trying to call. Oh, let's do this. In, in, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Right here. So what is 270 minus 30? 240. And right here, this one, we will get it by, what is 270 plus 30? 300. Okay, now let's do the ones in green. I skip those. So those are by 45, right? The multiples of 45. So this is 45. Now this one here, it's actually got to be, what is 180 minus 45? Right here, we can think of what is 180 plus 45? And right here, we can get this one two ways. We can say what is 240? Plus 45, or we could say, what is 360 minus 45? Three fifty. Three fifty. Thank you. Okay, now let's do the last one. I told you to use pink, right? I'm gonna use red if you don't mind. Wait, can we use red? If you want. Why? Right, pink too girly for you? Yeah. And so right here, the very first one will be 30 degrees or pi over 6. Now I want you to think of this one here. What is pi, look at my arm, what is pi minus pi over 6? Pi converted to a denominator of 6 will be how many up here? Pi just by itself, the denominator is a 1. So if I turn that into 6, 6 pi over 6, right? So when I ask you this, what is pi minus pi over 6? 5 pi over 6. So this right here is 5 pi over 6. Let's say you forgot that it was that. You could do this. Pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So this will be 6 pi over 6, and the very last, I mean the next one will be 7 pi over 6. I promise you, all the stuff that I'm doing with my arm, it has a purpose. You will be doing that too <laughs> when you're taking the test. Okay. Are we going to use this for a test? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 7 power 6. 
8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Thank you. Let's do it in degrees now. So what is 180 minus 30? 150. Right here is 150. What is 180 plus 30? 210. And this one right here, what is 360 minus 30? 330. Okay, now there are another numbers that we could take care of right now, and I want you to write this down on your paper. Um, somewhere on top, I want you to write down that the coordinates are going to represent cosine x. I'm sorry, not x. Let's not use that. Cosine theta sine theta. So just like we have on your handout, oh my god, sometimes my husband makes me work out. Uh, just like we have here on your handout, the sine is going to come from the y coordinate and the cosine is going to come from the x coordinate. All right? So now we're going to write the first four. And those are so easy. Now, I'm telling you that this is a unit circle, right? So what is the radius? Yeah. One. So could you guys tell me what will be the coordinates of this point right here? One, comma, zero. One, comma, zero. What color do you want us to do? Blue. The same as the angle. All right. One, comma, two. How about here? All right. So if we go on the left, on the uh, negative x's, that will be negative 1, comma 0. Okay, now I want, um, what's that? How about this one here? Remember, this is a 1, the radius is 1, 0, 1. Lorenzo, this one here. Uh, zero, Very nice. So right there, if someone asks you real quick, what is the sine of 90 degrees? What is it? Zero. Well, oh, one. one. That's it. What is the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. zero. What is the sine of pi? Zero. zero. What is the cosine of pi? Negative, Negative one. Okay? So, this is actually the easiest to know. Um, you could just draw your unit circle and quickly just label this point. And right there, you can tell what is the sine and the cosine of 0, of pi over 2, of pi of 3 pi over 2, and of 2 pi. See? So there's no reason for you to have your paper unit circle if you can have it on there. Okay? And that's what we're going to continue doing today. Um, so let's go back to the notes, and then we'll be going back to the unit circle. Okay? All right. Don't be scared. You're going to be okay. I see some of you are like... Okay, so now let's look at this point, this graph here, and we're going to answer um, for this particular angle, we call it T, this particular angle, it goes, this is the initial side, this is the terminal side. So right here, the point with the coordinates where the terminal side is at, is located at, those coordinates are going to give us, this will give me the sine of T, and this will give me the cosine of t. So let's go ahead and write them down quickly. So the sine of t is the y-coordinate, so that will be square root of 3 over 2. 
cosine of t is the x coordinate, so that will be negative one half. Is it clear why is it negative? Because all the x's, let's think of this. If we look at quadrant one, will the x be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. And the y? Positive. How about quadrant two? Negative, negative positive. positive. Quadrant three? Negative. Negative. Quadrant four? Negative. Positive. Negative. 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 Okay? So the signs are also going to play an important role, but we'll discuss this later on. Okay? So right here we have the point. So we still have to, it makes sense why the cosine is negative, right? Because it comes from the x-coordinate, and the x-coordinate here should be negative, because it's in quadrant 2. All right, so going back to this one. Now, what is the tangent? And for tangent, they're telling us to divide y over x. So we take the y-coordinate, the square root of 3 over 2, divided by 1 half. Now, here there are different ways you can divide fractions. I'm going to tell you the only way you're not allowed to use. You're not allowed to do it on the calculator, and you're not allowed to do it and convert it to a decimal and then divide it, okay? Sandwich? Sandwich rule, yes. That's one of them. You could do however you want. Um, I do like the sandwich rule because that's how I was taught, but you could use any other way. So you multiply the two numbers that are on the outside, mm -hmm. 2 times the square root of 3. Negative one half. Yes, thank you, Janet, thank you, yes. And then we multiply the quantities on the inside. So 2 times negative 1, so that will be negative 2. And so here you can see the 2's cancel, right, because they make up a 1. So the answer will be the square root of 3 divided by negative 1, or simply the, square, uh, the negative square root of 3. That's it. Now, do you guys remember how I told you that um, sines in cosecants are reciprocals of each other, right? So you have two options here. You could either do what they tell you here, 1 over y, or you could just take whatever is the sign and you could flip them, right? So it will be... 2 times the square root of 3. However, we cannot have radicals on the denominator, so we need to rationalize that. And we do that by multiplying times the square root of 3. Whatever we do to the top, to the bottom, we must do to the top. And why do we choose the square root of 3? Because we don't want to have what? The square root, right? So if we multiply the square root of 3 by the square root of 3, it will be the square root of 9, which is positive 3. Or you could think of it this way. The square root of 3 multiplied by itself, the square root cancels the square, so I get a 3. Right? So that is the whole reason why we multiply by the square root of 3. But don't worry, you're going to do a lot of this computation. So in this case, it will be 2 times the square root of 3. We just write them one next to the other. That implies multiplication. And for the bottom, we need a 3. Now, to find what secant is, we can take the reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is what? Negative, negative 2, right? Negative 2 over 1, or just simply negative 2. Now, let's look at cotangent. And so, we know what tangent is, right? See here? So if we flip them, we will have negative 1 divided by the square root of 3. Again, we need to rationalize it, so we multiply by the square root of 3, top and bottom. And so that will give us negative square root of 3 over 3. Do you guys recognize more or less what, what, what that, what, what will be the value of t in degrees or radians? Look at your unit circle. Take a guess. Two pi over three? It is 2 pi over 3. 
In degrees, what is that? 120. Okay. But we're not going to worry about filling in the circle yet. All right, let's move on. All right, now that one, I want you guys to work on it by yourselves. So we're going to use the same idea. Sine comes from the y coordinate, cosine comes from the x coordinate. If you notice here, both are positive because we're in the first quadrant. So go ahead and work with those, okay? I'm going to pause the video. So here are the answers for the problem. And we have the sine one half, cosine square root over two. They're given to us. We have tangent, where after canceling these two here, you should have a one on the numerator. And then for cosecant, it's a reciprocal of one half, which is two. For secant, it's a reciprocal of cosine. So it will be two on the square root of three. We still need to rationalize. So this will be 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 3. And for cotangent, what we did was take this form of tangent and get the reciprocal of it, which gave us the square root of 3. All right, if you had to guess, what angle will that be on your unit circle? 5 over 6. Hmm? 5 over 6, yes, that's what it is. And that's actually my favorite. In degrees, that is 30 degrees. In radians, it's pi over 6. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, the one that I always know by memory is sine of 30 is one half. If you know that the sine of 30 is one half, you can find everything else. I promise you. So going back, let's go to the unit circle and just write them down for pi over 6. So the sine was one half, and the cosine was what? Square root of 3 over 2. Now I want you guys to think of something. Follow my marker, okay? So we have it, a point here. If I take this point here that I keep tracing and make it bigger, and I reflect that point across the y-axis so that it's here, would it have the same coordinate? Almost, right? What will be negative? The x or the y? Yes. The x. So let's do it. No, it will be the same number, just with a negative sign. All right. Let's go back to the very original point. Chris, did you get that part? Yes. Okay. You go take this point, and now we flip it here to quadrant three. What will be negative? X and Y or both? Both. Both. Let's write them down. Same numbers. Now, going back to the original point, let's say we flip it here, right here. What changed? The X or the Y? The Y. So it will be negative one half, right? So. What I'm trying to show you, and of course we're not we're not done yet, but if you guys can memorize this first quadrant, which is going to be super easy, you actually can pretty much fill in the whole circle. All you got to do is memorize the first quadrant. Okay, so let's go back to the notes. No, you guys. Oh, like a blank one on the test? I'll think about it. A blank one? No, I'm going to give you guys a quiz of that. Like, I'll give you one piece of paper blank, and then you have to write, like, fill it all. Are you going to get a review? Well, we are getting a review, right? Now. Oh, no, we're like, <laughs> okay, like, we're not even done. We're just like easy. easy. It's not gonna be too much. Dima, you don't want to be in engineering class not knowing what your professor is talking about just because you don't know what's up with the unit circle. I can tell you, my cousin is in electrical engineering, and he tells me stories. I know. All right. 
Going back here. Let's go to the next slide, guys. Now, we already talked about pi over 2, right? Kind of? Okay. Let's just write them down. So we have here the point. Here's the point for pi over 2. And remember, we always get the cosine and then the sine. Right? So what is the sine of pi over 2? We look at the y coordinate. That is 1. What is the cosine of pi over 2? Zero. Now the tangent is y over x. So that's going to be 1 over 0. So what is that? Undefined. Undefined. All right. Now here for cosecant, it will be 1 over 1, or just simply 1. For secant, if we get the reciprocal of 0, it will be 1 over 0, which is undefined. And the cotangent, if we get the reciprocal of tangent, it will be 0 over 1, which is 0. Very good. And we already have those on our unit circle. Now let's look at the ones for pi. How about you guys write those down? So sine of um, pi, or 180 degrees. Remember, sine is the y coordinate, cosine is the x coordinate. should be zero, cosine is negative one, right? So I got two that were on the fine. See if they're the same one, cosecant and cotangent. Do we agree? Yes. yes. Okay. So as a rule, whenever the reciprocal function is zero, like in this case, sine is zero, the reciprocal function of sine is cosecant, so that's why it will be undefined. Whenever the tangent is zero, then the cotangent will be undefined. All right? Okay, we already have those on the unit circle, so let's move on to the next slide. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Mm. Okay, now in section 4.1, 
4.4 and 4 or 4.5. We're going to look at the sine and cosine wave. Okay, and those are the actual graphs of the function. So if we have something like y equals sine of x, it looks this way. Don't, you don't need to write it down. We're going to do plenty of them. And it keeps repeating. And we also have the graph of cosine of x. In this case, we're considering x to be the independent variable, the angle, okay? And just a rough sketch. It looks like that. Now, let's see if you guys can remember something. You can look at your unit circle. What is the sine of zero? Look at unit circle. What's sine of zero degrees? One. No. Negative one. No. Zero. Look at the y value. What is the sine of pi? Zero. Right here. This is pi. What is the sine of two pi? Zero. It's right here. What is the sine of pi over 2? 1. 1. What is the sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. That's here. Okay? Now, I don't want you to get confused. I probably already confused you. But um, this two, this graph, the weight and the circles, they are two different things. All right? But one comes from the other. And there's actually a video that I'm going to show you that shows you how if you unwind the circle, you can actually make a pattern of the wave. All right? And uh, if I feel like it and we have time, we might do an activity where you will graph the waves using spaghetti. Okay. You won't eat it. Okay. Now, the reason I want to show you that is because Right here, based only on the unit circle, we're going to identify what the domain and the range will be, okay? So for this one, we're going to consider the sine function. And in this case, I'm not going to use x, I'm going to use t, okay? So it will be y equals sine of t. So when I talk about the cosine function, which will be here, instead of using y, what letter would I use? X. X, X equals cosine of t. Okay? Now, I want you to get your head a little bit out of the x is for domain, y is for range. Okay? Just step out of that walk for a little bit. For domain, we're going to use t. So t, the angle, could actually be anything. So we will say any t such that t is, it belongs to the set of real numbers. Or as an interval, how do we say all real numbers as an interval? Very good. That's the domain. Now, the domain, remember, is the independent variable, okay? Now, for the range, the range is the dependent or the output. Now, you have to look at The y coordinates from this circle here. Which one is the smallest y? Negative what? Negative one. And what is the biggest y? Positive one. Right? So the range will be any y such that y is less than or equal to one, greater than or equal to negative one. Or as an interval, it will look like this, from negative 1 to 1, including 1 and negative 1. 
If we look at this wave right here, could you guys see what is the smallest y value? Negative one. What is the largest y value? One. one. Okay? All right, now let's talk about the cosine function. Okay, so cosine for domain, remember that is the input, which we're using the letter T. So again, the angle could be anything. It could be positive, it could be negative, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, whatever you want it to be. So t, any T such that T belongs to the set of real numbers, or we could say from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now when we talk about the range, we want all the x values, okay? So look at the x's, which one is the smallest x? Negative 1. Which one is the biggest x? 1. So from negative 1 to 1, or we could say this, any x such that x is less than or equal to positive 1, greater than or equal to negative 1. When you look at the cosine function, same thing. The maximum value will be positive 1. The minimum value will always be negative 1. And it just oscillates like that. It's a wave. It keeps repeating. And please, don't you ever tell me why we need to learn waves, okay? Because they're like countless things. Um, they, that's just a good just one of them? Just Your restoration. Yes, actually they are. And we're going to talk a lot about those. Yes, they're actually co-function, uh, co-functions. Do they have an actual Actually, you could say that one is rotate, is translated uh, 90 degrees, shifted, horizontally. Did you look at them? Okay, um, let's see, what do we have here? Oh my god, I can't believe we're so far. All right, let's finish this one quickly. So this was the last problem I did with my other period. Uh, we're going to find uh, the sine and cosine of power 2, and this one you better memorize them, okay? Now, this line that we see here, if it divides the first quadrant exactly in half, we know that this function, is, this line, is actually the graph of the function y equals x, which is called the identity function, right? Yes, identity function, because why do we call it identity function? Mm -hmm. Why, Chris? So x and y are in our energy. What were you going to say? Yeah, uh huh. So, yeah, I guess we could interchange them because they're the same, right? Y always equals x. So, it's identity. When, like, when you look at yourself on the mirror, you see yourself. So, what we could say here is that if this point is at the on the identity function, what can we say about the coordinates of that point? They're the same. So this graph, if they, let's say that we construct a gra uh, table. For the identity function, the y value will always be the same as the x value. That's why we call it identity, because the input is the same as the output. OK, so where I wanted to get with this was that these two points the coordinates are equal. A equals B. So if we take the equation of the circle, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and then if I replace the x and y with A and B, But I am saying that B is equal to A, so I'm going to replace B with A. So how many A squares do I have? Two. Two, Two A squared is equal to one. So I need to solve for A. So here, first I need to divide by two. Then I need to take the square root. 
So a will be the square root of one half. What I can do is take the square root of one, the square root of two, the square root of one is the one, the square root of two, we just leave it like that. However, we need to rationalize it. So what do I need to multiply by? Square root of two, square root of two. Square root of two. So that will give me the square root of 2 over 2. So a is equal to that. b is equal to what? The same. So what this means is that this is x and this is y. Okay? The coordinates of this point right here. So just very quickly, like in 30 seconds, let's go ahead and write down the six trigonometric values. So the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4, would it be the same? Yes. yes. Now, tangent is the x divided, I'm sorry, the y divided by the x. So what do you get if you divide a number by itself? 1. What do I say a number by itself? Because remember, we're, we have these two numbers are the same, right? Of the coordinates of that point. And so just lastly, cosecant. Let's do cotangent, that's easy. It's also one. Now for cosecant, I'm going to show you a trick. So like Dima told us earlier, instead of using the that form, we're going to use this one. So what will be the reciprocal of that? We flip them, so it will be square root of 2 over 1, or just the square root of 2. All right, so we'll stop here. Run to your next class. OK, OK. Well, you don't have next class. You should stay here and do homework. You do homework, too.